Hey everybody, welcome to the Daily Creative Challenges. What's up? How's everybody doing today? Um, hello. Uh, my cold is back. My throat is raspy. So today you get radio announcer voice, Andrew Hawkrattle. Hello, I'm your host and guide. Thank you for joining this podcast. Today we'll investigate Adobe Illustrator. Um, hey, sorry. So we'll be um, hanging out and looking at some new stuff in Adobe Illustrator. And again, let me introduce myself. Hi, my name is Andrew Hawkrattle. I'm your host, guide, and grinning bobcat today as we continue on in our daily creative challenges. We are here in a fall festival learning some new things in Illustrator. And today we will be making some custom brushes to show you how to make uh, maybe some leaves or snowflakes go along with the wind. And hello, all these people in chat. Wow, some new faces. Robert, I haven't seen you here before. Um, Mona, you're here as well. So good to see you. Hello from Mozambique, Africa. Bruno, nice to see you again. I remember you from yesterday. So thanks for joining us. We're here every day at 11.30 p.m., 11.30 a.m. Um, Pacific Standard Time. So if you want to get involved and you are just tuning in randomly and want more information, you can get it right here at behance.net slash challenge slash illustrator. Um, here, if you want to, you can click this button up here and it will notify you every day that there is a new challenge happening and going live. And hello, um, our Linda. Hello, welcome to the party. So as you can see, we spent a little bit of time in Halloween. I know that we're four days now into November um, and we've completely forgotten about Halloween somehow. So we've moved on and we have made some colorful foliage um, and today we'll make a falling leaf brush. Um, it is not fall here in Southern California. It is 94 degrees today, but we are going to will fall into existence. Um, and hello, Paul's here too. Hi, nice to see you. I'm here too. We're all here too. Um, let me know where in the world you are watching from. And I want to tell you about one more thing. As we come into the end of these challenges, we have two days left. Um, at the end, you can post a case study, which is basically just a recap of all of your projects um, here on Behance. Uh, you can see here from Lindsay Watch, this is a case study of all of her um, Photoshop daily creative challenges in the past. So you can see, just grab all the images and the different things that we've made and learned this week. And you can put it on Behance using the tag AI Daily Challenge. That will get you into the running to get featured here in the challenges gallery on Best of Behance. So check that out and hopefully get a chance to get featured. That'd be really cool. So let's go ahead and um, hop into our lesson. As it says here, we're making a falling leaf brush and we will be creating leaves that follow the breeze using scatter brushes. So Let's hop in. As you know, um, I like to have a lot of fun on these streams and uh, hopefully bring you guys a little bit of joy and give you a little bit of laugh today. Um, we are doing a fall festival theme to learn Illustrator um, and some of the basics today, brushes, but we'll be looking at it through the lens of falling leaves. So let's go ahead and hop over and join our friend Andrew um, on his journey into the woods on the fall festival. See you in a second. We are going to be taking those leaves that were flying at my face just a second ago and recreating some of them in Illustrator. Um, super easy way to make a whole bunch of things look like you spend a ton of time making individual pieces, but really we're gonna make all the pieces at the same time. So here is my question for you, my challenge for you, and that is over here. Can you paint with all the colors of the wind? That's what we're going to do today. Um, whenever I think of scatter brushes, I always think of the scene in Pocahontas when the the leaves are going and swirling and there's colors um, and that we're painting with all the colors of the wind. So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to make those leaves and have them follow a brush um, along a path. So it's going to be really fun. And hello, Hazma. Nice to see you. Um, thanks for making it, even though we're a little bit late. So today, create leaves that follow the breeze using scatter brushes. And that's right. We're making a custom 
some brushes today. But before we get started, I need to make a little bit of a gradient for, um, I don't know, maybe the background of the sky. So I'm just going to click and drag out a box here. Um, and I found this gradient really nicely over here in my swatches panel. I just clicked um, up here on color books, opened a swatch library, and went to skies. Where is it? Um, sky, skies, gradients, gradients, skies. Um, and I picked a nice sky so that we can have something to work on. So I'm just going to lock that in the back using command or control two. Um, and there we go. So continuing on, um, let's show you how to do a um, art brush first. So there's a couple different kinds of brushes we're going to talk about today. There's an art brush, which basically takes an object and starts and stops and it stretches it between those two. Then there's a scatter brush, which takes that object and repeats it and scatters it all over your path so that you can have multiple copies. So first we'll do the, um, the art brush. And what I'm gonna do is select, um, I have this nice little, uh, I literally took a Sharpie and just put it on a piece of paper, um, used Adobe Capture uh, to grab that and bring it in. Um, or you can just take a picture, you can auto trace it in here once you get it in, just so you can have um, something nice to play with, or you can do this with a simple shape. Um, and what we can do is with this selected, we're gonna click up here on our um, brushes. We are going to click the plus, and we're going to click art brush. And what this is gonna do is art brushes start at one point and stop at the other. And you can see here that it's taking whatever we have and doing left to right, right? So it's starting here and stopping here. We can stretch to fit. And what's a, what that's gonna do is take that object and stretch it along the path. That is what we want. Um, the direction is heading left to right, looks good. And here in the colorization, we always wanna change this to tints. And tints is going to make it so that we can change the color of this stroke very easily as we go um, and we're gonna hit okay and now you can see um, under here I actually have two of them because I was practicing before here let me delete that one so you guys can't see it there we go as you can see um, this brush that we have just made right here I'm fresh and never before um, we are going to apply that to a stroke so check this out all we need to do is grab our brush uh, are we on a locked layer why did we, uh, let's go ahead and do a new layer. Brush, brush. Y'all, I don't know what happened. Something weird happened. All right, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna cut over here for just a second. We're gonna head back to the forest and I am going to open a new document and see if we can get that going. All right, so it is working and we are back. Let's go ahead and work on this document. Um, give me just a second. And there we go. Sometimes you got to do things on the fly. There we go. We are back and we have our little brush. Again, we're going to select this, click on a new and do an art brush and hit OK. We're going to do all of the things that we just did doing the tints. And now we have our brush in here. So you can see if you get it, it's um, very quick sometimes. So now we're going to grab the brush and kind of just make a swash. Uh, and what's happened is it's actually taken this shape that we had up here and swashed it along that path. You can see that it's starting over here. And then over here, it is stopping on that side. So what we can do is we can click here and because we have it set to tints, we can actually change this color to whatever we want. So I know there's a lot of purples in that scene. Um, and so now we have a nice little purple kind of going through the wind. And again, we're just grabbing the brush tool with B and clicking and dragging. And it's going to make all of these um, colors of the wind for us. So we're gonna make a bunch of these. And then you can simply go in, grab these, and even change the colors, right? So we can do a nice light blue, so we have some things interacting. Maybe over here we want to do a nice little aqua green. And maybe I want to take all of these and just multiply them down so they interact with each other. Ooh, so now we're swooshing in the wind, right? Um, so that's pretty fun. Next, I want to show you how to make a leaf brush that will scatter along these. So I actually want to, let's just see what happens here. If we do a little blur, Let's take this down to like a 10. Ooh, now that's looking like the colors of the wind. There we go. I'm in. I'm into it. All right, so we've got some colors of the wind. Uh, now I want to show you how to do that same effect with a scatter brush of leaves. So we can do that scene where the leaves are kind of going through. 
what we need to do is we are going to make a leaf. This is going to be the base leaf. And I'm just making a circle here and then turning this top point into a point. If you think about a leaf, again, very simple shapes. All it is is a circle on the bottom and a triangle on top. And now we have a leaf. So I've converted that top point by grabbing the pen tool, holding alt or option. You can see that it has a corner that pops up there. That just means that it's converting it to a corner. We convert to a corner and then I'm going to drag the direct selection tool all the way up. And there we go. Now we have a nice little leaf. Um, I'm going to cut out maybe some little pieces of this leaf and let's see what happens there. So I'm just going to grab the polygon tool. We've done this a couple times and just do a polygon of three, which makes us a little triangle. And we're going to use the Pathfinder tool to cut out some edges. Now I'm just dropping in um, little pieces here and there so we can have some texture um, and some small elements to this leaf. And let's go ahead and select all of these. And we are going to make a compound path going to Object, Compound Path, Make. And with that, we'll select the two and come over here to our Pathfinder and we will subtract the top. Now we have a nice little leaf um, that's looking good here. I'm actually gonna round it out just a tiny bit, um, just so we have a little more dimension. And you know what every leaf needs? A little stem. So we're gonna do just a little stem here and center that up. So now I'll make this all one shape using the Pathfinder right there. And we've got this nice little leaf. We're gonna shrink it down using S. Um, the hotkey that I'm hitting there is just S to scale it very quickly. And from here, we're gonna grab our leaf. Now, it doesn't matter what color this is. Um, it can be any color because we are going to be clicking here and again, clicking on the plus. And the plus is going to make it so that um, we can make a new brush. So anytime we wanna make a new brush, go here and click that plus. So instead of an art brush this time, we're gonna to want to make a scatter brush. So we're gonna click right here on scatter brush and hit okay. Now a scatter brush, how it differs is it's just that, it scatters. Um, so let's go ahead, uh, a bit quiet next door. Um, is my audio, Is uh, let me know if that is a reference to my audio, cause I can fix that. Um, or if, uh, I don't know, if, if it's quiet somewhere else. Um, so let's go ahead and name this one leaf brush one. We're gonna do another one. Um, and here are a bunch of options. So there's a size, spacing, scatter, and rotation. I'm gonna tell you what each of those means. So size, we're gonna put this to random. And what that means is that each of the leaves that it puts on this path is going to be a random size. Now we can put the parameters from the smallest to the biggest. Right now, this is like too big. So I'm actually gonna set the biggest to 80% of that and the smallest to maybe, uh, let's say 20% of that. So it'll be pretty small. Spacing, this is how much it's going to space between one leaf and the other. Um, we can go ahead and actually take it uh, a little bit down. And if you mess up on these, you can always change them after, which I'm gonna show you because there's always a setting that is not right and that I don't like. So I always come back and fix it. The scatter is the amount of distance that it's going to be above or below the line or the path that you create. And the rotation is how much it's allowed to rotate. I always take this either way. Um, sometimes you don't want it to rotate if you're doing like a Christmas wreath or something, um, but here we want all these leaves blowing in the wind. And again, we're setting it to tints and tints is gonna allow us to change that color. So hit okay. And you'll see that it'll actually show up here in the top of, of this panel. And that means that it's a scatter brush instead of an art brush. So art brushes go down below and scatter brushes um, go up the top. All right, and yes, um, Umicorn, we are making custom brushes. So I'm gonna grab the brush tool again, just hitting B, and we're gonna draw, and you can see now that it's starting to pick up our leaf brush. So it started to pick up these leaves, and you can see that the scatter is a little bit weird and wonky, and I also don't like the color. So let's go ahead and do this. Let's change the color to a nice burnt orange. So we've got uh, that nice burnt orange and we're also going to multiply these down. Ooh, yeah. So um, I've actually made a mistake that we are going to fix right now. So we see our path, we can actually enter into control Y or command Y. Now we'll do outline mode and we want this path um, because I believe this is the path that is um, our leaf brush. Yep, we can see up here. So I'm gonna go and set this back to normal because I made a mistake. And it's okay if you make mistakes here because you can always go back and change them. We're going to, with this leaf brush selected, click on this little menu right here. 
and this will allow us to change all of the pieces. We can turn on um, the preview, and I believe we want hue shift. So I told you tints, tints is going to change the color um, just a little bit, and yes, it is the Pocahontas scene. Um, so tints is going to tint the color to that, so it's not gonna be full color, it's gonna be a tint of whatever you started with you need to go to hue shift. That will completely shift the hue to whatever color you pick. So I was wrong there, but guess what? You can be wrong on these because you can go back and edit them. Now the next, it looks like the scatter, I have not done right. So I've done only negative, which means that it is only going to go below the line, which we can see here, right? The problem is that I've set it to only go below the line. I don't want that. So we're gonna go ahead and add the scatter above the line and you'll see that now it's taking those leaves above and below the line. Looks like there's a little bit too much below. So we're gonna go ahead and bring these in and there we go. Now the spacing is also a little bit too much. So we're going to take the spacing and bring it in quite a bit. There we go. And bringing this in quite a bit is going to make it so that these are getting closer and closer to each other, um, which is what we want. We want a pretty tight spacing on these leaves. There we go. Rotation looks fine. Um, the scatter looks like it's going a little bit too high above, so we can bring that down. And there we go. Now it's hitting somewhere nice. So now that brush has been augmented, we have some awesome leaves kind of blowing in the wind. And check this out. If I wanna take my brush and make another set of leaves, we can, you can see that right here. And maybe these ones are a little bit lighter orange. You can see as we change that, it's gonna make it a little bit lighter orange. And then let's do one more that does a swoopity do. Um, and this swoopity do looks like it's a little bit too much. And that's fine, because we can bring this down and go to 0.5, and it's gonna make and scale that brush along that path. So now we've got a little swoopity do um, that is here. These leaves are gonna be a little bit more of like a greenish, uh, yellow kind of bring it maybe down here yeah there we go this feels like it would be friends with the river and the otter um, so we've got some leaves following in the brush you can see here that they are following that brush um, and I'm going to do one more for you in the next few minutes just so you can see um, what it looks like to maybe change uh, some other options so we're gonna make a polygon tool I'm gonna click here, I'm gonna do seven points on this polygon because we are going to try to make um, a uh, uh, like a maple leaf kind of thing. So with this, I'm just going to use this shape, drag it down and boom, now we have a nice leaf. Um, I want it to be more pointed so I can select this shape and go to distort and transform and pucker and bloat. Here we are going to pucker and then what that's gonna do is take these straight lines and turn them into curves. So bring it down get a little bit of line there, and then I'm just gonna rotate holding Alt or Option, and it's going to make a nice little leaf shape for us as we kind of push through here. So I'm just gonna do um, a couple of them so that we can kind of get an idea. Uh, really rough, really uh, kind of free form with this leaf, and that is totally fine. So put that over here, it looks good. And then maybe this leaf also has kind of a centerpiece that is in the middle, but maybe the centerpiece is brown. So we're gonna change this to a nice brown, and then maybe there are some pieces that come off the edges, right? So this is already looking very complex, but that's fine because these brushes can handle it. I um, mean, somebody asked the question in chat, which I'll show you right now, is can you do multiple objects with a brush? And the answer is absolutely. So let's say that we have one of these, and maybe we want to do a couple of these. So I'm gonna go ahead and expand this out and just group it, oops, just group. And maybe with these, we want to have some nice little circles that are kind of floating around it. So with all of these different shapes, we can absolutely create one scatter brush with all these shapes. So I'm gonna group it. It's important that it's all grouped. And then we can go to uh, right up here, new brush, do a scatter brush and hit okay. And this time we are going to change it to tints. And what that's gonna do um, is I believe that that is going to start to shift the colors of everything to whatever color we make it. So we will um, do the size it needs to be much smaller because it's very, very large. Um, and then from there, the spacing, again, these randoms we will do, um, sure, let's do 100 scatter random, we'll do 100 and rotation, we'll rotate either way there. So we'll hit okay. And now you can see with all of those shapes, if we wanna add them in, we can grab our brush, 
and now we have some uh, some leaves. And you can see here that because we're using the um, the tints, it is now going to change to whatever color. It's just going to tint everything that color. So we keep the same values, um, but it's changing the tints. I believe if we change this to um, hue shift, which we did in the past. Um, I believe, yes, it's going to really pump those colors. So if you really want to pump the colors and shift them, you can change to hue shift, but usually I'll do tints on something like this with multiple shapes, um, just so it isn't so crazy. So we'll bring this down here and get a nice little, um, yeah, see that gets pretty crazy. But if I want it to just shift softly, I can simply go to tints. And there we go. You can see that it just goes to that nice little gray. Again, this is too big, but that's fine because we can come in here and as always, we can set it to 0.2 and now we have a couple little um, little uh, leaves kind of floating in there. And again, I definitely want to do a little more scatter. So we're just gonna put this up and there we go. You can see that it's scattering a bit more above and the bottom and the spacing we can do so that it is very, very tight. So we get a lot of leaves in there. So there we go. We have an awesome uh, couple brushes and we have painted with all of the colors of the wind. So what I want you to do is create your own brushes, create your own leaves and try to make me feel that Pocahontas uh, dream. Uh, let me uh, paint with all the colors of the wind. Uh, let me run through the forest um, and uh, check out the sunflowers and uh, play with some falcons. Uh, do all of that here in Illustrator for your daily creative challenge. And once you're done, you can post right here at at bit.ly slash AI discord forgot to mention this at the beginning of the stream but that's where we do reviews that's where we all come together and post our work so um, something that you can do is you can actually combine this with what we did yesterday so if you've been tracking along yesterday we did foliage and we created different color schemes of foliage well if you were doing that, maybe you create some scatter brushes of maybe some leaves that are blowing away from the trees. Um, maybe you're just running through the forest and again, painting with those colors of the wind. Play around with what you can do with scatter brushes um, and then post it here on Discord for me to check out and do some reviews. We will be going live a little bit later tonight and doing those reviews and hanging out together, um, probably around uh, 10 p.m. Pacific time, so pretty late. I will be posting the link right here in Discord for you to catch up if you miss it and can't watch it live. Uh, let's take a look at what's coming up today because there's always some great content um, right after us. Oh, oh, hold on. Hold on. Right after us is a great amount of content from your friends at Adobe Live, which is, oh, look at that. Wow, what a right schedule this is. Um, Aaron Grace Johnson is coming up right after this with packaging design. Andrea Effie a little bit later today with the XD Daily Creative Challenge, which is like this, but for XD. Um, then Kyle T. Webster with the draw along. If you like want a moment of serenity and just like to chill out today, set your calendars 2.30. That time with Kyle T. Webster is the most relaxing, amazing, fun, goofy, funny, amazing time. So join it um, at 2.30, it's gonna be a great time. And then after that at three o'clock, rework it. Um, one of my favorite shows with our friends, Cloudy and uh, Jesus are going to be on. So check that out, it will be fun as well. And as always, we will be back again tomorrow with another daily creative challenge, continuing in our fall festival theme. Um, if you want to and you missed it right here, we can sign up for those challenges, get notifications every day by clicking on this button right here. And I know that we've covered a ton of things. So I want to recap a little bit about the th tools that we've learned um, and give you maybe something that you can go back and watch. So the first day we did jack-o'-lanterns and there we learned about glows. We learned about glow effects and how you can add those and combine them to create some really awesome glowing effects in Illustrator. Next, we did some ghostly type. We worked with the zigzag tools and a little bit of envelope distort to create type that could wiggle and wobble into whatever we wanted it to. Uh, next, we painted our faces using blending modes. We talked about freeform gradients a little bit and we used blending modes to contour, to add highlights and to add colors throughout our face. Um, after that, we did uh, create a costume and from there, the creating costumes, we made patterns. We showed you how to take a pattern and apply it to a graphic style 
style. And from there, those graphic styles you could apply to any other shape. The trick or treat, we did some colorful candy shapes and showed you all about using warps. We did arcs to create licorice. We did a twist to create some candies. Um, we even did, uh, what did we do? Like a spiral tool, a twist to create a peppermint. And we also played with freeform gradients and had a great time making peppermints with those freeform gradients. Um, we also did some colorful foliage yesterday, which was very fun. You saw some of those in Discord. And today, Falling Leaf Brush. Um, so if you want to check out any of those, oh, in the Falling Foliage, we covered the Edit Colors option. So check out any of those um, on our streams. And as always, I'll see you again at 11.30 a.m. Pacific Standard Time on the next episode of the Illustrator Daily Creative Challenge. Bye, everybody. Have a great day.